Hello, my name is Caleb Jacobs, and today I'll be presenting on a radial basis function generated finite difference method for solving partial differential equations over evolving curves and surfaces. So I've been developing this method with PhD student Jacob Blazewski and Dr. Cecile Pere of the Mathematical Sciences Department here at Michigan Tech. So kind of our motiv motivation is in the medical field. So if you're given some sort of scan, such as a brain scan um, but, or anything really done by an MRI, you want to know where the different boundaries are, are in that scan. So such as a brain scan, you want to pick out the different types of matter in there. And software is able to do that from the images. But it doesn't do too great of a job. So as we can see here, we have our original image on the left. We have um, the generated image on the right from a computer program. And you can see all sorts of boundaries are kind of, I don't know, bland. They're not there. So there's a lot of fine details that's missing. And we aim to kind of make this better. We want to have higher resolutions and all sorts of things. And that comes down to solving partial differential equations, PDEs, over evolving curves and surfaces. So partial differential equation is just something that models uh, fluid flow, heat transfer, um, stresses in a material, uh, any kind of physical phenomena such as that. And then evolving curves, it's just a, a surface or a curve. So to do this, well, we should start with the easier case, so static surfaces. So we're given data points on a surface, and now we need to fit some sort of function to it. And in this case, we're using radial basis functions, RBFs, to fit that function to those data points on the surface so we can actually do something with it. And here's that function up here. Um, so once you fit that function to your data, well, then we can compute everything we'd want, such as derivatives, normal directions, curvature, whatever. So in this first figure, we're computing the normal direction to our surface, which has a lot of useful applications. Um, so the red vectors are the normal directions. And then this lower plot uh, is an error of that normal direction. So we can see that it's really good along the straight edges. But then once you get onto corners, um, all of a sudden, it doesn't do as great. And the reason it doesn't do too great at this corner is there's just not enough information there. You'd need more data points, and we're doing as good as possible, really. Um, another thing you can do, though, is also compute things such as the Laplace Beltrami operator, which is kind of a Laplacian applied to surfaces, so it can model heat flow and a bunch of other things, um, any diffusion property. And we can see that uh, our method, as we increase the number of nodes, so the number of points on our surface, the error decreases, which is expected. So. Um, this is exactly what we would expect to see. And it kind of adds some validity to our method. And then we have this rounding error at the bottom, which that's just caused by floating point arithmetic in a computer. And we can remove it if we need to. So our static method works. So now let's move on to the next logical step, evolving methods and evolving surfaces. So to do that, there's two things we can do. You can either do point-based method or level set methods. So point-based methods, you just look at each point on a surface and pretty much kick it through space according to some equation. So not too hard, pretty straightforward. The level set method, though, that's where now instead of looking at each point on the surface, you look at some background function that actually describes the distance away from the surface you are. Um, so if you're inside the surface, the function is negative. It's, if you're outside, it's positive, And it's just equal to the distance away from it. So that's called the distance function. And from there, you take that distance function and apply the level set equation, which is in this red box down here, um, to evolve that in time. And you just use standard PD techniques. In this case, we use radial basis generated finite difference because it has a lot of really nice benefits and convergence properties. So some tests with that. Well, if you have a circle and it's shrinking in time uh, according to curvature, uh, that's just one possible test case. And people have done this, and that's what we see in the top. So this is someone else's error plots over time. We can see that it kind of follows, uh, I don't know, this sort of trend. It's an S-shaped curve. So our method does a pretty similar job. Um, and it does a good job, too. So it uh, shoots up and follows very similar trends, and then it spikes up. So our method is working in comparison to other people's methods. Now, the harder problem, though, is what happens if you have two circles, and they're expanding, and then eventually they merge? So this is where the level set method comes in. It does a really good job at handling changing uh, topologies, uh, things that rip uh, their sharp corners, and they merge. Um, so we compute that distance function, and then we apply this level set equation 
to evolve our surface. We can see it expands, eventually it connects, and then it uh, combines and actually uh, tears apart in the middle. And it's still really sharp there. So in order to get the surface back from the distance function, um, we actually need to use something that we like to call uh, the cool Newton method. So we developed that and that's given up here. So you essentially just apply this equation a few times to your data set and it puts all the points onto your surface uh, given a distance function. And it works really well. It's able to expand points and whatnot. So these are all the common tests and our method works pretty well with them. Um, there's still some things that we have to work out, but in general, our method is working. So it could definitely help with things such as medical imaging or any other problem that's related to this field. So that is, um, that's my poster. So I hope you enjoyed. Thank you.